Next on BYUSN, the top 10 football players we believe are returning for BYU's implementation into the Big 12 next season. And it's a ball night at San Diego State tonight for men's hoops. Do we expect the Cougs to play dramatically different than Monday's game? Uh, I hope so. Welcome back to BYU Sports Nation. Presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. Happy Friday, everyone. November 11th, I am Spencer Linton. He is Jerem Jordan. And a shout out early to all of our veterans on Veterans Day. Absolutely. Uh, both my parents were in the Air Force. Uh, shout out to my uh, mom, Julianne, and my dad, David. I was born on an Air Force base in Mountain Home outside of Boise. And so as a kid, uh, going to the Air Force base and seeing the F-14s and 16s flying down and was just a familiar, fun, loud sight. Uh, that sometimes I still miss when I think about it like that. Love that. Your family immediately impacting you in that regard. My dad was a member of the National Guard. Uh, both my grandfather served in the war. So, yeah, the military touches and impacts and affects everyone for the better, and uh, we're so appreciative yeah. of that. I can barely tell where you are over there as well <laughs> in, in the camo. I was Fighting. like, I can only kind of just see your head. Well, um, you're just kind of floating. Stare at that bright American yeah. flag right Abs there. Absolutely. Uh, <laughs> I, I could stare at that all day. I love it. Okay, on today's show, we look ahead to who might bounce early from BYU football. There's some juniors who have been here five years, COVID, redshirts, and so on. We'll talk about that in the top 10 returning potential players on the roster for football. Spencer Johnson joins us live from San Diego, discovered by the Germans, ahead of the big game with the Aztecs tonight in men's hoops. Jamie Shepard, women's soccer NCAA tournament game, a little revenge on the line, 11-game unbeaten streak against UVU tonight in the NCAA tournament. She'll be in studio. And uh, Dallin Hall with the impression that you need to see, <laughs> which is just so good. But first, here are today's headlines. BYU men's basketball, as Jerem just mentioned, at San Diego, taking on the 19th-ranked Aztecs tonight. Tip-off, 10.30 Eastern. Listen on BYU Radio with pregame beginning at 9.30 Eastern. Greg Rubel, Mark Duran on the call. Six-seed women's soccer, as mentioned, hosts UVU tonight, 8 Eastern time in the NCAA tournament. First round on BYU Radio. Spencer's got the call on ESPN+. Plus. Wolverines last team to beat the Cougars way back in September. Let's go Cougars in the NFL. Tyler Algier under the Thursday Night Lights had eight carries for 20 yards and an Atlanta Falcons loss to Brady Christensen and the Panthers last night. There are 12 different Cougars in the NFL playing this weekend highlighted by Fred Warner and the 49ers taking on the Los Angeles Chargers of San Diego that include Michael Davis and Kyle Van Noy on Sunday Night Football. Women's Hoops hosts Montana State in its home opener tomorrow at 4 Eastern on the BYU TV app. 18th ranked BYU Women's Volleyball hosting St. Mary's tomorrow at 3 Eastern on BYU TV and the BYU TV app. They had a successful uh, eat and greet. Indeed, uh, indeed. Told. They included a win as well. <laughs> I, they should have just served 25 aces in a row, three uh, sets of Number two men and number six women's cross country are in Albuquerque for the NCAA Mountain Regionals today. Big week for signings for BYU Athletics. Women's basketball no different. They bring in a big-time guard, Amari Whiting. She's joined by Kaylee Wilson, Marini Mata, and Alia Matavao. That, those are some big-time players. Uh, Whiting, 33 in ESPN's Top 100. Wolston, Gatorade Player of the Year in Utah. Matavao, Gatorade Player of the Year in Nevada. Mata is a, a Spanish player, so great signing class. Speaking of, softball signs three new players in pitcher Kate Daly catcher Abby Gillespie and pitcher and outfielder Gianna Mares. Our boy Paul Lasique starting at inside center for USA Rugby, the Eagles, against Hong Kong tomorrow in Dubai. Game two of three in the final World Cup qualifying tournament. The United States beat Kenya 68-14 last week. And this coming out just moments ago, Gloria Navarez, West Coast Conference Commissioner, will be the new commissioner of the Mountain West Conference, replacing wow. Craig Thompson as of January 1st, so even before BYU leaves the league, Spence, BYU will have a new commissioner in the West Coast Conference. How about that? Before leaving July 1st for the Big Ten. And then they will have a, a different new, new commissioner. commissioner. Yeah, yeah. Embrace your mark. All rise and shout. It's time for What's Trending. Three more games for BYU football, and then we begin to really look at how the Cougars fit into the Big 12. Nah, let's do it now. We will a little <laughs> bit. Who is playing their final game at Lavelle Edwards Stadium when BYU hosts Utah Tech a week from tomorrow? And equally as important, which players are not 
meaning which ones are coming back for BYU's first year in the Big 12. Yesterday we thought, huh, let's make a list. Let's talk about the guys that are leaving and the guys that we think are coming back. And the guys, the guys we think are leaving. The guys we that don't we even think know, are right? leaving, yeah. yes. Yeah. It's, it's based largely on our conversation with Cam Miller yesterday as we discussed NFL draft stock led by Jaron Hall and Puka Nakua and Blake Freeland all on the offense. We think those guys are for sure gone. And Clark Barrington most likely. We'll sure. see. Isaac Rex, who knows? Peyton Wilgar is a guy that is leaving because he has to. He's graduating. No, he's a junior. Oh, that's right. He can COVID come back. Year. COVID year. It's hard to know, right? Who in the world is going to come <laughs> back for BYU? But it's hard the, to, know. to play it on the safe side, let's just assume all of those guys are gone, which leaves BYU with some huge voids to fill. Big shoes. So uh, with that in mind, or the guys we think are leaving for the NFL next year, Jeremy, who are the top 10 players that are coming back next year for BYU as they take on the Big 12? Well, I want to bring up a couple other names. So we know that, like, Chris Brooks and Lopini Couture are gone. Yes. Because they don't have eligibility. Yes. Okay, there's a couple of guys like that. We're not sure due to injuries on a couple of guys like Gunnar Romney. He could redshirt this year and come back. Or do what Baylor did, which is, hey, I'm just done. He's I'm going to get a job. Altogether. Yeah, could be. Uh, Chaz Ayu could use a redshirt this year. He hasn't redshirted before. I think he's medical redshirted, but... He has a, another year, and then Peyton Wilgar is listed as a junior. So if he wants to come back, he could. Let's just get that guy a parking pass, huh? Okay, and then juniors that are probably NFL bound. You mentioned Jaron Hall, uh, Clark Barrington, and Blake Freeland, and Puka Nakua. Yep. These guys have been here, I think, four or five years each. And, uh, yeah, if they want to bounce, they certainly can. They're on NFL radars. If they want to come back and better their stock, they certainly could. Jaron Hall is not a guy that can better his stock that much, uh, we think. So, yeah, we'll see. Okay, top, so we made a list. Top 10 guys that we think are coming back. We're not sure on Peyton Wilgar. If he comes back, he's definitely on this list. We didn't put him on this list. Um, but here's who we have in alphabetical order. And okay? in no, I mean, this yeah. is no specific order. Alphabet, well, the order is alphabetical. Okay, That's sorry, but from 1 to 10. Like, yeah. don't, don't get confused. Like, oh, yeah. it's 10 through 1. Cody Epps, Keanu Hill, Harris Lachance, Malik Moore. Connor Pay, who's crazy high grade on PFF. Number one. Keenan Peely, Isaac Rex, Chase Roberts, Kingsley Suamatia, Max Tooley. Okay. Now, guys, just, just off. Again, if Peyton Wilgar returns, if Gunnar Romney returns, if Chaz Ayu returns, those are guys that you'd probably slot into the top Ooh, ten. You know I what I mean? I don't, Chaz has not been healthy long enough. I don't know that I would. Okay, no the Chaz then. He's, yeah. got, he's got to play more to work his way in. But the other sure. two, yes. Okay, other guys that were just left off. Ryan Rico, Campbell Barrington, Ben Bywater probably. You know, it's a snub there. Uh, Michael Harper has now, played Michael well Harper's this year. Michael Harper's got a case. The way yeah. he's played in the latter part of the season, he's he's been really strong, playing really physical yeah. football. So he's a guy that could get, get, get in that list. Yeah, and, and guys that um, are, are talented, we just need to see more. Uh, we jokingly call them the one-game guys. Is Hinkley Ropati. Yep. Right? Nice performance. Uh, one game. State. Miles Davis against Wyoming. Chase Roberts against Baylor. Chase is a high school All-American. We expect him to be a top 10 player next year. Which is why he's in the list. Braden Cosper has done, uh, you know, he, he's like a, a tremendous role player right now on this team. Uh, Jackson McChesney mm -hmm. uh, is, a, is a guy that has shown us some real flashes. But we've had one game from several of those guys where it was like, whoa. Just want to see a little more there to kind of crack in that top 10. But the point is, we always got some nice pieces coming back next year. Yes. Even if these big four go to the NFL. And maybe there's other guys that want to bounce. Maybe Harris Chance has his degree, and now he's married and has a kid, and he's like, nah, I'm out. Like, who knows? But Kingsley Suamatia, just pencil him in right now at left guard. Or, sorry, left tackle for next year. He just switches over to left tackle. That's spot secure. Now you get the Braden Kimes and the Campbell Barringtons and those guys coming into the mix, that depth that BYU has on the O-line. What I don't see in this list of 10, and even the guys that are just on the cusp of getting into the top 10 players returning for BYU next year, is any quarterback and any running back. Yep. So clearly, BYU, yeah. what they need the sure. most this offseason, whether it be transfer portal or just high school signees, they need to bolster their depth. From bringing the JUCO ranks, BYU needs probably multiple quarterbacks to join that room to uh, join – the likes of Jacob Conover and Kingsley, or sorry, Cade um, Finnegan. Soljay, Mayava Peters, and Cade Finnegan. Is Mayava Peters competing for the starting spot? I'm not quite sure. They're just saying yeah. he's. they need guys to join in that, that room. room. They need guys sure. in that room. Sure. And the running backs, like, yeah, we've seen a little bit from Miles Davis, and we've seen a little bit from Jackson McChesney. 
But who, who's and the guy? And Hinkley is a screen sure, sure. catcher. Who's the guy that's going to get the hard yards? BYU does not have that guy. I this don't think year. he's on the roster. Right BYU now. does not have that guy this year. A guy that's going to lower the shoulder pads and drive for a yard and a half or two yards on fourth and one and third and one yeah. when you need it. That was Tyler Algier. Tyler Algier was special. Well, he was everything. Physical. He was the longest explosive yards runs. Year. But when you needed two hard yards and everybody knew it was going to Tyler Algier, he'd figure out a way to get two and a half yards or three yards. Or 50. Okay? Like, who is that guy? BYU needs a running back and a quarterback and everything else after that, right? Like, it's quarterback, running back, and then you can I, fill in the gaps I feel that. good about tight ends, O-line. Obviously, D-line, you always got to get better at that position. Linebackers, you probably um, return. You may return all those guys. Ben Tule, Bywater, Peely, Max and, Tule, but, Keen, if, Is Keenan Peely going to come back? Like, we hope he, he comes he's back. He's a right? junior now. Cam um, Meller said that he's, he thinks he's the best player on BYU's team next year coming back in terms of draft stock which is pretty wild. I don't feel the same, but I hope that he's right. You know what I mean? I hope that Keenan is in that position. Right now, Keenan, as of, as of this moment, Keenan's not an NFL linebacker. He can certainly have a breakout year and become that guy next year, but he's got to play better next year. Um, there's, there's some talent coming back, but yes, there's some serious spots. I would almost argue, Spence, not more than quarterback, but the next spot, it's like you've got to figure out what the coaching situation is. I'm not talking to head coach. I'm talking assistants. Certainly there might be a shakeup in the offseason given what happened this year. I don't know that there will be, but I would anticipate that there very well could be, uh, especially on the defensive side of the ball, the way BYU didn't play, especially during that streak. Typically when you have a season and a streak like that, there is some kind of change there. I'm not calling a shot or anything on what I think that is, but certainly I wouldn't be surprised if there was something there. Hopefully BYU plays really strong, gets to eight wins, and maybe they captured something, and maybe that's not necessary. I don't know. Perhaps it is already, no matter what happens, but we'll see. BYU getting to a bowl game was something that we all felt like, okay, you have to do this. For sure. You have to do it. Yeah. They will accomplish that after they beat Utah Tech mm -hmm. a week from tomorrow. Live on BYU TV. Then after that, we'll see. You go and beat a Stanford team that is kind of tanking, it feels like, Three. at this point. <laughs> They've been tanking for a couple of years. Three and six but right Stanford now. But Stanford beat Notre Dame this season. Yeah. So, what, so it's not even hard to beat Notre Dame? Stanford team oh. is going to show up oh. against BYU. But let's say BYU goes on the road, gets a Power 5 win, albeit against a bad Stanford team. They're 7-5. and five. You go to bowl game and you win it, and you're 8-5. and five. Does that help at all try and lure somebody out of the transfer portal now that BYU, hey, like they, they started playing better ball. Doesn't they've matter. Got, they've got back-to-back -back quarterbacks that have gone to the NFL draft. Maybe I want to get involved there. Okay. Oh, Zach Wilson Spencer, and Jaren Hall back-to-back? -back? The results don't matter. Because okay. Zach Wilson joined BYU when they were 4-9. Like, so, he took a major chance he, and joined BYU after the 4-9 season. Well, yes those and no. His, those are his words. Right. Yes and no. BYU has a history of success at this position. Yes, they had, were coming off a bad season, but that can quickly change. Like, these don't last at BYU. It, uh, and then, poof, uh, you know, you get, you get 21 wins uh, the next two years with different quarterbacks. So I'm not convinced that that's not necessarily the case. If anything, it's like, oh, there's a real opportunity there. BYU's go going to a Power 5 league. And so I, I would hope that there's a P5 transfer that BYU can bring in that can have an immediate impact. So now we sit here, Spence, it's like post-94. And you go, okay, who's it going to be? And Sark shows up. And in 95, they don't have a great year. But they, four. they don't go to a bowl game. They don't win the – or did they tie for first but not go to a bowl game or something? It was something weird, right? 7-4-1 or something. And then 96 happens, right? I'm not saying BYU is going to do 96. I'm just saying success. And then there was a situation where uh, a Max Hall transfers from Arizona State, and he's uh, the scout squad guy in 06, and then boom, 07, 08, 09. You can have guys that come in and have an impact. It's not a thing that happens often at BYU where a transfer is the quarterback and is the guy for a while. But it's certainly likely to be the case well, next year. It's interesting. Year. Like, yeah, the whole transfer thing. Well, think about it. Max Hall was a transfer. Riley Nelson was a transfer. Mm -hmm. Taysom Hill was a transfer. Like, like yeah. <laughs> and Taysom, yeah, Taysom and Max are interesting because they never actually even, I think, show up on campus, if I understand. Maybe Max did, but Taysom never even went to Stanford. But those but, guys were in the system, but however. Now, like, now like they, had, they, had, they had a year to learn and grow in the system. Like this is Well, a, welcome to 2022. We think where this it's, is a plug-and-play situation. I mean, it would have been Jackson Dart if he had chosen BYU, but he chose Ole Miss, and that was a great decision for him. They're top 15. They got a big game uh, with, I think, Alabama this week. Like, I don't fault him for not wanting to sit behind Jaron Hall. Yeah, and I, I mean... And, and again, but it's got to be a Jackson Dart-like guy, hopefully. Cade Fennigan and Jacob Conover are going to have their shot. 
Yes, They're to compete with those compete, guys for the starting spot. But regardless, like BYU needs more guys in that quarterback room. Maybe two. Yeah. Maybe a JUCO guy and a totally. transfer portal guy to join those guys. So you have five. You need depth. Heck, we need depth at uh, the anchor spots on this show. So we can uh, take days off or whatever. You know what I mean? Like, we work together as a group to make this happen in the same way BYU needs to bring in a, a uh, quality player. Now, that could be a junior college guy. I'd love there to be a, a P5 guy that steps in and boom, it's a, just a real success story. And you for would think, like, going to the Big 12, back to back That's NFL enticing, draft quarterbacks. Think. Both of those things combined. That's why I say I don't. Th- be enough. I don't think it matters what happens with BYU in terms of the luring part. Yeah, I just think BYU is an attractive spot no matter what. Hey, come to BYU, go to the NFL and play quarterback, and be the Power Five guy leading him into the Big Twelve. Like that. That's for a couple years. Go to the point, NFL. Right? Let's go. Okay, topic two. Do you expect men's hoops to play dramatically different tonight against San Diego State than they did Monday? Let's define dramatically different. Uh, no, dramatically different to me would be like they shoot 45% from the three-point line and only turn it over 12 times. And 12 they shoot, would be amazing. They shoot 50-plus percent as a team. I mean, it, it was rough against Idaho State, no doubt about it. I don't expect dramatically different because San Diego State is a really, really good defensive team. That said... I do expect BYU to not turn the ball over 23 times. I feel like BYU is going to have to value possession a little bit more against San Diego State specifically. So don't run and gun? Well, run and gun, but not as, I mean, Idaho State wanted to run with BYU. San Diego State's not going to want to run with BYU. So at times, maybe to keep this game close and, and just instead of like you're running and gun, if you keep turning the ball over and you continue to go fast, then San Diego State builds a 12 to 14 point lead. You're not coming back from down 12 or 14 against San Diego State because they will slow that thing to a snail's pace. But what if you build a 12 to 14 point lead because you're running? That's not going to happen on the road against that team. I just don't Mm. think it does. They're too good defensively. I do not see a way BYU is building a 14 point lead against San Diego State because they're outrunning them. I just don't see it. Run and gun, threes in the corner. I don't see it. Bang. Now that, okay, again, like, so don't turn the ball over 23 times because the pace will slow automatically just by who you're playing. Like, it's, it's all on San Diego State. So BYU could sprint as much as they want. San Diego State's still going to play their, their pace. Really good defense. And then I don't expect BYU to shoot three for 16 from the three-point line. I expect it to be a little bit better than that. Yeah. Like, can we hope for, I don't know, 35% as a team from the three-point line or 33%? Give me five out of 16 instead of three out of 16. I'd take it. Okay? Yeah. So better but not dramatically different. They'll take better care of the ball. They'll shoot a little bit better from the three-point line. And the pace of the game is going to be different than what you saw against Idaho State. I don't think it's going to be dramatically different. Here's why. That was the San Diego State type of game. Low scoring, low shooting percentage, physical, rebounding, free throws, make a play here or there. Okay? That's how San Diego State likes to play their games, and that's how they like people to play against them. So I... BYU's thing isn't size. San Diego State's got some real size. Led by Mountain West Conference Defensive Player of the Year, Nate Mensah, who is a beast. He's from Ghana, so we got, like, Africans uh, challenging each Boosting other in this game. Boosting the Tiki yeah, and Nate be, Mensah. It'll be fun. It'll be Mali versus Ghana at the starting five. Remember, Foos is undersized at 6'5 and a half, but a 7'2 wingspan, so it's going to be tough against the 6'10 Nate Mensah. But they've got uh, Darian Trammell put up 18 uh, in their opener against Fullerton. He can shoot it. Butler can shoot it. So it's tough because San Diego State traditionally has been that, let's just chuck it up against the backboard, get an offensive rebound and lay it in. Like, obviously they're more skilled than that, but generally speaking, it's like a dump and chase hockey team. BYU likes to power play, if you will, as Mark Pope has said. So we'll, we'll see what BYU does. But the, the real stat that sticks out that we haven't mentioned yet is outside of the restricted area, BYU went 4 of 32. Oh, oh my That's God. bad. So that includes three-pointers, obviously, and 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 – twos and even in the paint outside of the restricted area one for eight if BYU can just make some of those shots just at least shoot 45 percent from two um, including the restricted area you got a shot in this one and hopefully BYU can uh, obviously not turn it over remember BYU held its opponent to 56 points and created 22 takeaways so that that level like do you have to have that yes but the, that's the right bad with the good yeah it I'm not saying they're going to create 20 turnovers but Points off turnovers were big time for BYU as well in this game. And so let's see if BYU can't do what they did two years ago, which is pull off an upset. BYU has a better shot to win from Ken Palm than they did two years ago in this game. Interesting. 
23% chance to win, according to Ken Palm. It was 19 two years ago. And it's 19% according to the Basketball Power Index. Yeah. ESPN. Play, dude's got to make plays in this that didn't. Like, Rudy Williams, all good, bro. Let's go. Jackson nine. Robinson, Gideon George, all those guys. Yeah, I'm glad you brought up Rudy because yeah. he's one individual I expect to be a little bit better. He won't shoot two for nine. He'll have more than one assist and certainly a better assist to turnover ratio because he turned it over four times as well. Yep. So, yeah. Yeah, Rudy plays better. Yep. Maybe BYU as a team plays better. Yep. Got to do it. Let's hear from you in Voice of the Nation. Our question of the day, we're going to stay with basketball. Do you expect BYU to play dramatically different against San Diego State than they did on Monday against Idaho State? At Jan Callahan 20 on Twitter says, yes, turnovers will be fewer. Shooting will be better. Focus sharper. BYU may not win against a very good and tournament team like the Aztecs, but they will battle. BYU plays well in Viejas Arena. Seven uh, at uh, nine and seven all time. How about that? BYU has a winning record in Viejas. And by the way, 76th meeting, a nice round 50 and 25 against San Diego State. Wow. That's a random fun A stat. winning record in that arena in that many games is pretty crazy. You, you better thank Charles Zabu who's banking in corner threes. <laughs> that happened in 2011. That was one of the weirdest shots I've ever seen. Who was our boy that hit the big shot against San Diego State the last time? It was Brandon, Brandon Averett. Averett. Yep. Yeah, it was Brandon Averett that yep. hit the big three yep. late. Final 30 seconds. <laughs> oh. Okay, check out uh, 18th ranked women's volleyball tomorrow, 3 Eastern time, as Aaron Livingston and the Cougs play someone who wants to play them. Uh, 3 Eastern time on BYU TV. Up next, speaking of making big shots, Hey! The guy who hit the game winner against Idaho Let's State. go! Spencer Johnson joins us to preview tonight's game. Where does he think BYU will be different and will it be dramatic? This is BYU Sports Night. BYU Food to Go's convenient location at 2191 North Canyon Road in Provo makes bringing popular BYU foods to your next event easy. Everything's ready when you need it at the drive and load pickup. You drive in and they load no matter the weather. And stop in the on-site creamery for great BYU chocolate milk and ice cream. BYU Food to Go, bringing campus to your table. Call for details, 801-422-5001. Let's kick off AFR on BYU TV. What they did in that fourth quarter was not unexpected in my book. Everyone did their job perfectly, and it resulted in obviously a touchdown. Who knew that he had these kind of hands? And right at the snap of the football, they both go right downhill. And, and that was the end of that. <laughs> he, did, he, he knocked him down pretty quickly. Johnson hands it to Foose and gets it back. Johnson pops a three. Got it! Welcome back to BYU Sports Station live on a Friday. And a ball night for BYU men's basketball against 19th ranked San Diego State. I am Spencer Linton. That is Jerem Jordan. Joining us now from lovely San Diego, much warmer than the weather we're experiencing currently in Provo, is another Spencer, Spencer Johnson. Welcome to the show, man. How are things going? What's up, guys? Good to be here. This weather in San Diego, unbelievable. Listen, if the Mormon Battalion had just stayed there, we could have all been in San Diego right now. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I know. Why didn't Brigham Young say, this is the place right here? <laughs> oh, San Diego. 
Spencer, you've had a fantastic week and one that has taken you to, you know, some highs for sure, hitting the game-winning shot. So how do you properly come back down after that stratospheric high of hitting the game-winner in a clutch situation against Idaho State and get back to work? Man, well, that was a crazy moment. It was like uh, obviously uh, something you always dream about. Um, but for me, it's just like I just got to be here in the moment and just focus on what I'm doing and, you know, we got a big time game tonight against a really, really good opponent. So definitely got to got to be locked in on them and and what their the whole game plan is. Before we talk about the Aztecs, uh, which is such a great game. I've, I've loved this game every year for the past several years. How many texts, DMs on social media did you get after Monday night? <laughs> a lot, a lot, man. I was I tried to stay off my phone. I was on it for like 10, 15 minutes. Then I put it away. I was like, I, I can't do this right now. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, you got you got to manage the madness, right? And that's right. Whether it's good or bad. So, how has the team? Like you, you obviously are trying to get back to even kill and get ready for San Diego State. How has the team digested the Idaho State win? In terms of, hey, we know we can play better, but we found a way to win, and we know San Diego State's going to be way better. So, where are you as a team right now mentally? You know, I think we're in a good spot. Our coaches have done a really good job of, of pushing this scout on us really hard, um, trying to focus on, you know, the keys to the game, which uh, will give us the best shot to win. So we've really been focusing on that the past couple of days. And um, so mentally, I think we're in a good place. We're confident. We're ready to go. And, and tonight's going to be a great night. You and the Cougs are 2-0 and against San Diego State the last two years. So what are some of the uh, winning ways to beating a san diego state team that's always super long and physical yeah well they rebound the ball like crazy man they got some big guys so we definitely <clears throat> we got to box out we got to keep them off the glass um we got to limit our turnovers which is which was an issue in our first game we got to take care of the ball because they're ultra aggressive trying to you know swipe at it and take it from you so we gotta gotta take care of that and obviously just just make plays for each other in our first game, we didn't have a ton of uh, really open looks. You know, we were taking a lot of tough shots. And um, if we can get into the paint against this, the San Diego State team, I think we're going to have a lot of driving kicks and we're just going to have a lot more open shots. Spencer, for what it's worth, and I know Jerem just mentioned you've won the last two against San Diego State, BYU has won four of the last five games overall in Viejas Arena, hey. which is wild because San Diego State is so good at home. Is there something sure. special about that gym that makes BYU feel good? What is it? It might be the Jimmer effect, man, just rubbing off on us. <laughs> the I'm, Noah Hartsock effect, yeah, too. Maybe so. Well, yeah. and, and two years ago, there were no fans in there. Uh, it was a, it yeah. was like a COVID game with the show, but the show will be there. the The wannabe return missionaries uh, will be there <laughs> in the crowd. That's right. But, uh, yeah, and this is a big game. And, Spencer, you guys, obviously, you want to make the NCAA tournament. This is a quad one opportunity. They're ranked in the top 25. Last year, you guys went early on the road in November, early December to Oregon. Boom, laid the smack down. So, um, I, talk to me about the confidence of this team, as you mentioned, coming off of Monday, knowing, yeah, you can play better because, let's be honest, you guys were, I brought it up, 4 of 32 outside the restricted area. That number is going to yeah. go way up tonight, you'd think. Totally, totally. You know, I think our confidence is higher right now because we're like, hey, we've seen where we're at kind of in a little slump, but like it's time to take the next step up. Like we can only go up from here, right? So I think that's something we're looking forward to and um, just have the most confidence in my guys and my teammates, and, and we're just excited to get it rolling tonight. Spencer Johnson of BYU Men's Basketball is on BYU Sports Nation. He's also a newly converted Miami Dolphins fan. Hey, it's going well. Hey, absolutely. Things are going well with Tua. Maybe we'll talk about it in a second. But, Spence, <laughs> I, need to, I need to ask you, how do you simulate – you know, you just gave us the keys to the game tonight, which is rebounding, taking care of the ball against a really yeah. aggressive defense from San Diego said, How do you simulate that in practice and get better in that regard? Um, we didn't call a lot of fouls in practice these past couple of days. So um, it really was just like when you drive into the paint, you have to expect dudes to just be raking all over our arm. Like I have a bunch of scratches all over my arm just from our, our scout team was just so good this week. And um, so that's something that, I mean, you just can't make excuses. You just got to man up and do it. 
The, what's this road trip like, right, uh, with this team? Because obviously you talked about the weather, but it's the first one on the road with this group. Who's like, yeah. who's like the the funnest guy to hang out with? Who's your roommate and so on? Well, I'm rooming with Trev. He's, uh, I think he's running on the treadmill right now. But uh, um, Rudy's pretty fun on the road. Um, Trading Christensen. I don't know if you guys know him. He's a pretty funny guy. He's a good dude. Okay. Been hanging out with him a little bit. So. Um, but we got in late last night, so we haven't had a ton of, a ton of time to kind of hang out and do stuff, but it's been fun. And you went out of, uh, you flew out of Provo, right? Mm-hmm. Nice. Yeah, we flew. Have you guys hopped on Breeze Airways yet? Haven't been. With them. But, no, good. but I know it's, uh, they're now at Provo. Yeah. Yeah, it was pretty nice. Okay. And, and cause you used to go out of Salt Lake in non-conference and then Provo in conference. Is that right? Is this new that you're going out of Provo in non-conference? No, so ever since I got here, we've always gone out of Provo. Oh, the Spencer super, Johnson. It's super era. nice. I get it. <laughs> yeah, Spencer Johnson. Hit a game gets winning here. shot, and they'll bring in the private Provo, plane, know, Breeze Airways, yeah. and take you to San Diego. Hey, that's pretty nice. It's crazy. Man. And the Provo Airport, let's be honest, that thing's nice. You just you just walk out there. It's like All 10 airport. minutes. Oh, it's we drove our car right up to the plane, oh. walked right on. Yeah, yeah, love that. Beautiful. All right, Spencer, a uh, few quick questions before you go. First of all, you brought up Rudy Williams. How has Rudy been in practice this week? Because he was visibly and understandably frustrated after the game against Idaho State. Totally. Um, you know, he's played college basketball for a while, so he knows, you know, uh, how this game goes. And, and he's fine. Like, he took a he, – he bounced back, and he's like, I'm not going to let that game, you know, affect me. I'm just going to move on, and I'm going to play hard, and, and I'm going to play with my guys. And – um, so I expect him to have, you know, a bounce back game. He's going to play well tonight. And then secondly, his backup Dallin Hall was really, really good in a tough scenario to help, you know, just do his part and do his role. We learned something about Dallin yesterday. He has an incredible ability to do an impression of Korg from Thor Ragnarok. <laughs> We're going to hear that in the next segment. So good. <laughs> do you do any impressions? I don't do any impressions. But I know Dallin has some other ones that you guys should definitely oh, ask. Oh, really? Me about. Nice. Really? Okay, yeah. so this is something we need to explore. Yeah, I might be throwing him under the bus, but uh, <laughs> it is what it is. Hey, he's a freshman. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> All right, Spence, let's give you some BYU Sports Nation karma for the game tonight at Vieja Serena. Let's go, baby. Continue that domination in San Diego and uh, enjoy yourself tonight playing in front of what's going to be a fun, hostile crowd. Let's go. Thanks, guys. You got a Spencer Johnson of BYU men's basketball joining us from San Diego. Yeah, we'll have more from the um, uh, the impression conversation later. It's coming up in the next. But yeah. in, in all seriousness, Dallin Hall, like to be put in that scenario, like hey, just you, you're the point guard. Like Rudy's having an off night. It's your first game. He's a gamer. For him to step up that way and yep. like the moment was not too big for him. Nope. Really impressed from that. Beware game. the mouth guard guy. I keep saying it. like he's the mouth guard Channeling guy where you're like Matthew Della Vadova. Like when when the dude brings like the elbow pad, you're like, what this is a pickup game. What do you do? You know what I mean? No, he's ready to rock. And this is a big challenge for BYU. Double digit underdog out of Vegas, ten and yeah, a half. So yeah. Vegas thinks uh BYU's gonna get blown out tonight. And San Diego State is uh, you know, Ken Palm says eight point win, uh twenty three percent chance to win. So no. The, the numbers don't say BYU's going to win tonight, but they didn't two years ago either. Yeah, just hang around. Get it to the weird zone. If you're within six under eight minutes to go, then it just gets weird for the home And then team. the Channel 4 News team <laughs> descends on Viejas. <laughs> okay, listen to tonight's BYU men's basketball game at San Diego State. Huge one, Aztecs and Cougars coming up with the pregame on BYU Radio at 9.30 Eastern time. And with so many Cougs in action this weekend, which games are must-wins? Big time matchups for a bunch of teams. I'll tell you at the, what's at the top of our list next. This is BYU Sports Nation. BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere.
If you're looking to build your brand awareness and increase market share as BYU moves into the Big 12, this is the place, BYU, BYU Athletics. Athletics. We can provide the tools you need to make sure your company is seen and heard. BYU Athletics is where you can align your products and services with loyal fans that cheer for our Cougars. And they can also help your business win. Learn more about what a partnership with BYU Athletics and your company will look like. After all, this is the place. Email sponsorship at byu.edu today. This is where we dominate. Our playground, place of business. This is our promised land, where we seek to find ourselves. And we're here to make sure the spaces our best prove themselves on appear how they should. Intermountain Healthcare, official medical provider for BYU Athletics. Before I was a coach at BYU or before I was even a player, I was a BYU fan. That's why BYU football exists, is because of the fans. To have a bunch of fans that want to see you be aggressive, I think everybody can live through our 123 guys on the roster and the 11 that are on the field at a time. Really, it all starts and ends with the fans. BYU Sports Nation is on social media. Make sure you follow us on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, TikTok, and perhaps Mastodon. We'll see. We'll check it out. And now, welcome back on a Friday. I am Spencer. That is Jerem Jordan. Let's whip it. Cougar Whip Round presented by Marisk, your e-commerce logistics shipping partner. Don't say it. Declare it, Spencer. We'll declare it. Who will lead BYU in scoring at San Diego State tonight? It's going to be... Gideon George. Oh, that's my answer, too. Is it really? Yeah. Dang it. I thought I was going off the radar a little bit with that. But I feel like his game translates well against San Diego State. Driving, slashing, He's like a foul, San Diego State make, player. Yes. Long, defensive, yes. Uh, got a nice shot. Yeah. I think no. it's going to be Gideon George. He's going to make a few more three-pointers. It's going to be Gideon. So second leading scorer will be Rudy Williams. He bounces back in a big way. Tonight. Probably. Not Foose. Tough matchup for Foose. Tough Fus. matchup for Foose. Just do your best to rebound tonight. For sure. Women's soccer has won eight straight NCAA tournament matches at Southfield. That's amazing. They're at Southfield tonight as they open up the NCAA tournament. Mark Pope, as BYU head coach, has won all of his home openers now after beating Idaho State. And all of his true away openers, the true away opener happened at San Diego State. Will both of those streaks continue tonight? We sure hope so. BYU is going to be challenged tonight uh, at San Diego State. Chances are BYU lose, but hopefully they overcome and they win like they did two years ago. But yeah, women's soccer, confident. That streak will continue Very confident at Southfield. Yeah. Yes. Okay, women's basketball is a little different. Yes. Women's soccer, women's volleyball, men's basketball, women's basketball. Own action today and tomorrow. Besides women's soccer, mm. you get to guarantee one win this weekend. Who you got? Oh, it's easy. It's men's basketball. Yeah, me too. Hugest opportunity. Quad one resume building win. Yeah. Women's volleyball and basketball, they don't need the guarantee. Well, exactly. Though. And again, this isn't like men's saying that the does. other teams are going to lose. You're just guaranteeing that one of these teams will win. Yes. It's men's basketball. Yes. yes. I got the biggest challenge. Mm -hmm. Over under how many students in the show, the San Diego State student section, dressed as missionaries tonight? I go 12 because, uh, <laughs> you know, 12. So 12 is a lot. Uh, I'm going to go eight. Yeah. I mean, Vegas you, had nine and a half. If you want to be seen on TV, you have to have at least eight. Like eight. That well, how many have a bike helmet on, too? That clump of white shirts. Probably four with well, bike helmets on. The, the, the bike helmet ratio is going to be 50%. It's so it's such a <laughs> it's such a tired play. That's not safety zone approved content. Such a tired play. Like, I like the show is good. You got to come up with something different than missionaries and bike helmets at this point. Been there, done that, It's man. so, so tired. Maybe something new. Maybe something new for sure. Okay, this week, Dallin Hall showed off another impressive talent with his Korg impression from the last two Thor movies. Listen to this. Okay, I don't know if you've ever seen Korg from Thor Ragnarok, but I'll do a brief impersonation, I guess. Hey, 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 man. My name's Korg. I'm a giant pile of rocks. You don't have to be scared of me. Unless you've got some scissors with you. Just a little rock, paper, scissors joke for you. Thank you. <laughs> I, I, better, better performance, Cork, or his performance Monday versus San Jose. Oh, man. <laughs> That's tough because I even tweeted out last night. Like, I have so much, like, respect for people that can do high-level impressions. Yeah. That is high-level. 
But I said it earlier, like the step in where the moment wasn't too big for him in his first real game at BYU and lead, help you lead BYU to a win, that, that's going to be tough to beat. Ten points all in the second half. Yeah, it was Monday, but that's pretty good. For I love it. It's cool. <laughs> like it's all about the cadence of like down to Yes, yes. Kiwi, love the Kiwi action. <laughs> so Has somebody checked on Johnny Linehan about this? Oh my gosh. <laughs> Johnny's like, this is how we talk. What are you doing? <laughs> okay, Lauren Gustin, Ariel Mackey Williams, who had 18 points, 16 in the first half against Colorado State. New head coach Amber Whiting in the BYU women's basketball team. Back in the Marriott Center, home opener tomorrow for Eastern on the BYU TV app. Has there ever been a better impressionist than Dallin Hall's version of Korg, please? Get out of here, Bill. <laughs> Up next, we sit down with Jamie Shepard. Yeah! Ahead of tonight's NCAA Let's tournament go. matchup. It's a rematch. Vengeance match. This is BYU Sports Nation. Playing her sister tonight. No, you gotta be This portion of BYU Sports Nation is presented by Maersk, your e-commerce logistics shipping partner. Tim Daly Ford in Spanish Fork offers a large inventory of Ford vehicles, including a selection of cars and trucks, providing a range of transportation choices. From the Ford Fusion sedan and the Edge crossover SUV to a range of pickups, including the F-150. Each product line comes with options to enhance performance, comfort, and safety. Think Ford. Think Tim Daly Ford in Spanish Fork. My dad was born in Shila, in the south of Italy. My mom is from Slovakia. We haven't really talked about it, never, not once. My dad doesn't really talk about his life in Serbia. I just really want to know who he is. And then discover who am I. <laughs> Enjoy the words of that song. One top. Down for a minute. One top. Back on top. Yeah. Good motto for BYU women's soccer last mm -hmm. year and this year. Joining us now from uh, the BYU women's soccer team, she is the midfielder of the year in the West Coast Conference and an all-around great person. Yeah. Jamie Shepard. What's up, Jamie? Awesome. Happy to be here. Game day. We appreciate yeah, you coming in day. on game day. Yeah. Big day. NCAA tournament. You, you've been you've been through this before, notably last year. Yes. How are the emotions today on the biggest game of the, the year? Oh, they're high. I'm excited. <laughs> Waking up, a little some nerves, a little anxious, uh -huh, but uh -huh. it's been a long week. For sure. You Is know, your wait to, for this match? Yeah, selection show well, on Monday. Have to wait till Friday. That's a long time. And now you're but here. But we are excited and ready. We have a lot to discuss, including a rematch with your sister. Yes, we'll we get do. there in a moment. But I didn't even know it was UVU. I just thought it was Jamie versus Jenna. Oh, that's Jamie what, that's versus what Jenna? I heard. Yeah. So that's that's yeah. all that matters. <laughs> first things first. It's going to be a balmy 25 degrees when this game kicks off tonight. Mm -hmm. How's your warm weather gear and Holy the soccer cow. team's warm weather gear for that matter? Oh, my gosh. We are, we are going to be bundled up. Um, I, I keep telling myself, I think it was the Gonzaga game, right, with the rain? Uh-huh. Yes. 
if we can play in that, survive that game, we can survive that. It was 40 and rainy. And like, rainy it, the whole time. Like, would you rather see. have 20? It was bad, right? Yeah. Um, was it? Would you rather have 25 and no rain or 40 and rain? 100%. 100% 25 100%. and no rain. You know, That's what you have today. Bundle up with some long sleeves, put yeah. my gloves on. Uh -huh. it'll be fine. So you're not one of those crazies that goes like sleeveless. Mad, like the vodkas are like, we don't need sleeves. Yeah. Come on. Liv Smith, no sleeves, no gloves. I'm like, you're crazy. <laughs> I will be long sleeve. I've got like up. scarf tucked into the coat. <laughs> Beanie on. Yeah. yeah. It yeah. took me longer to pack my gear for tonight's game than it did for me to get ready this morning. Seriously? I was like, okay, I need yeah, this coat. I need know. that. Wear these gloves. I need these thermals. <laughs> like thermals. <laughs> they come out like twice Straight a year. Up. Is one of the next. Straight up. Okay, so you're you're ready and equipped in that way. Okay, for the All cold right. weather. What's the biggest challenge uh, of overcoming tough weather? Like, is is it mental or is it physical? I think a little bit of both. Um, I think we, during our warm up, especially try to really get a feel of um, the field, how the field, how it's going to play, and just kind of things like that. Especially, you know, we practiced yesterday outside, and we're encouraged to kind of practice in what we're going to play in, and just kind of get mentally prepared, being out there, and then obviously physically prepared, and know what's what's going to mm -hmm. happen. Okay, UVU, obviously. Last team to beat you way back in September. 4 yes. 2. Your sister plays on the other team. Yeah. When they got an at large, perhaps BYU helped them get to Certainly the Certainly helped their cause. But here you are, and it's your home field and a chance at vengeance. You guys have uh, been unbeaten in the last 11. What do you think of the matchup and obviously the emotions of playing your sister? Again. Yeah. Very exciting. Um, like I said, that, that day, Monday selection show, it was, it was a crazy day, you know, to see. BYU and UVU paired up next to each other. Woo! Crazy. Uh -huh. um, it means a lot. And obviously, we have played them, got to play them earlier in the season. And um, UVU is a great team. They've got a lot of great players. And, you know, anytime you play a, a team cross town, it's, it's going to be a battle. And it was a battle. Um, but we are excited. You know, we've overcome a lot this year. And, we're excited to get another chance at them. Have tonight. you texted your sister this week? Yeah, we okay, we've you're talked. In normal we're very communication? open about it. Okay, yes, yes. and you're tight. You two are close. Oh, yeah, right? best friends. Best friends. Do you except, ever like? Except for tonight. Except between for six you know, and once eight. we step on the field, and that's the thing. We we get along extremely well. Um, like I said, best friends. But we are very two competitive people, and you don't get this far without being like that. And for sure. So, you know, when we step on the on the on the pitch tonight, it's going to be, you know, all we're all in for our team. And but when the game's over, you know, we'll just continue on, continue on being sisters and friends. <laughs> How do your parents handle something oh. like this, like split shirts I, or anything weird like that? You know, they did that my freshman year. I haven't seen those since. We'll see mm. what you know, what happens tonight. Yeah. OK, but they'll have a big old coat on anyway. Yeah, it's not hopefully. Gonna, there's I'm no like, question. Cover, yeah. I think it's it's def I, it might be hardest on them honestly. For sure. Hard to come out and <laughs> yay no uh, yeah they you know yeah. either way it's a lose lose for them. If so. you both scored goals and they're like yeah, ghost OT, nice. they're like this is great. <laughs> You're like but neither of you are pleased right? Yeah, so <laughs> it's a tough one. How is BYU a different team right now than you were when you played Utah Valley the first time? Yeah. You switched positions for crying out loud. Been like two months. Exactly. Yeah, it's been, yeah, two months. Um, obviously, this season we've kind of gone through, we've had our ups and downs. And we, like you said, whole new position. I was in here earlier telling you guys, yeah, I'm going to be in the attack, playing that attacking mid. And obviously, that's not the case. Um, we've, you know, we've tried lots of different formations and different things this year. And we've we finally settled in. And we've come a long way. And our, our main thing at the beginning of this year was finding that, finding our identity, especially after last year, you know, having a great season and a lot of success. We had to come in this year and find what works for this team and this group of girls. And I think we've done that. We have found what works and, you know, we're, we're striding at the right moment. And so we're excited. How's the hand? You broke your hand earlier this year. Oh, Against UVU? Against UVU. Oh, we grief. think. You don't yeah, even you know. Don't know. It was kind of a buildup. I kind of jammed it in the CSUN game, and then I think I fell on it. 
in the UVU game, and I think that's when it happened. Which one is it again? Right? My right hand. You don't need you, a hand. You don't need your hand in soccer, so yeah. it's no big deal. <laughs> well, I mean, you do it to show a little now, bit. Do you wrap yeah. that thing up for a game like tonight? Stick that brace on. Okay. Just yeah. straight brace. Straight brace. Maybe, Maybe score a brace. Yeah. As well. Oh. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I, I've been, uh, I really liked watching just your maturity in moving back to the sixth position and Olivia Wade moves up and takes your position. Why has that worked so well? Because that's not always easy to overcome. Yeah, for sure. Um, I think obviously Liv, her freshman year was playing in that six and I think we've both just grown up playing in the middle and just very versatile and able to play wherever we you know Liv's done a great job and has been able to step up and play that position and really help our attack and score some very important key goals for us and um, I obviously am comfortable back there have played my whole three years there and so you know being able to kind of step back and really get connected with that back line again you know it's just worked for us and we're we are willing to do whatever is going to be make us at our best so and you were at your best in last year's tournament, all the way to the national championship game. How did that experience help this team, you think, this year going into this tournament? Yeah, a lot. It's helped us a lot just knowing that it's possible. You know, you kind of have to break that barrier a little bit. I think coming to BYU, you don't think that, you know, you're going to have a chance to play in the national championship. And that was an amazing experience. And having a lot of players return has helped us a lot, just kind of breaking down that barrier and saying, yeah, we can do this. We can um, do something that BYU women's soccer has never done before. And I, while you don't, you hope it's over in regulation with the win. Yes. There can be overtime for that. Just a reminder uh, to everybody because it wasn't in the regular season, yeah. but you hope to win in regulation. Of yes. Course. That's been a little crazy this year for us um, with the new rules um, with NCAA oh. not allowing overtime. Boo. And we kind of hope or we like to tell myself that some of those ties on our on our record would be moved over to For some sure. wins with just maybe a couple more minutes, you know, against some teams in our conference, LMU. Oh, no, it would be LMU. St. Mary's, Mary's Pacific. Yes. Yes. Yep. You know, a couple more minutes to, I sure. think we would have put put a goal in. Maybe so. Santa Clara. Maybe Although Santa that was a great scoreless. Fantastic yeah. performance by BYU. So, Jamie Shepard, of the eight wins, two losses, and 27 ties, BYU <laughs> women's soccer team. <laughs> we Ready for, Not quite, but yes. Ready for the NCAA tournament tonight. Okay, it's time we do our part and to give you the BYU Sports Thank Station you. karma. Thank you. Okay? Awesome. You have earned it. Good luck. You deserve it. You can hold it all to yourself if you want. You can share it around. Whatever you want to do. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you, guys. You can pull an Ohio State if you want tonight. Score two goals. Yeah. That'd be fine with me. Bring You're welcome. That. Brace. Yes. Bring brace. out the brace. Brace for the brace. Brace and the brace. Yeah. <laughs> Thank okay. you. Awesome. Thank you. Check out BYU Women's Soccer tonight, as we mentioned, 8 Eastern on the BYU Radio app. Also, ESPN Plus, Spence on the call. First round of the NCAA tournament. Let's go, baby. It's on. BYU and UVU. And while it's not Utah being relegated to ride on a BYU bus, we still do have a fantastic rise and shout out on the way. <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this is BYU Sports. That was awesome. Holy disrespect. BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. Introducing the Truck for Adventure. The all-new 2022 Nissan Frontier doesn't compromise on power or comfort. This mid-sized truck was redesigned to incorporate the latest technology and designs for safety, comfort, and convenience. Plus, with up to 6,700 pounds of towing capacity and best-in-class horsepower, it's rugged enough for adventure and still safe enough to transport all your favorite people. Where's your new Frontier? You'll find it at Tim Dowling Nissan Southtown in South Jordan. Before I was a coach at BYU or before I was even a player, I was a BYU fan. 
we've got great energy as a team, but we have even better energy because of our fans, and it's absolutely magical. When you hear the crowd roar, that makes it more exciting, more of an adrenaline rush. The roar of the crowd, you can feel it on the floor, you can feel that energy, and it's unlike anywhere else in the country. BYU Sports, it's all about the fans. This is BYU Football with Kalani Satake and Greg Rubel. When I was younger, I was a better dancer. Don't show any more dancing. Or, yeah, okay, good. <laughs> I think we've developed some really good habits the last couple weeks and, and looking to step it up again. A lot of great things can happen when they care. Not bad. That's good stuff. Hey. Yay. Yeah, thank you for ending on that one. That was a good <laughs> one. <laughs> This portion of BYU Sports Nation is presented by Mountain America, the official credit union of BYU Athletics. BYU Sports Nation is on demand. Download the free BYU TV and BYU Radio apps and subscribe, rate, and review the podcast. Our question of the day, do you expect BYU men's basketball to play dramatically differently than they did on Monday against Idaho State? At Bag Benley on Twitter says... Sorry, what? Is this... Ben's this, burner can This isn't Ben <laughs> Bag Benley? What? Wow. Who is this? Bag Benley says, yes, I think BYU will shoot a lot better. They shot almost 50% from three against Ottawa. Granted, that yeah. was an exhibition. NAIA. Yeah. And yeah. scored over 100 points. I think both that game and Idaho State are outliers. BYU will end up being somewhere in the middle offensively. Defense has been consistent, though. Uh, here's the thing. San Diego State, as you mentioned, Slow tremendous, defense. tremendous defensive team. Uh, and again, 4 of 32 outside the restricted area, so right under the hoop. How many points does BYU need to score to beat San Diego State? 65? Like, I feel like if they score 65, that might do it. That might do it. I can't. Crazy. I can't remember the last two uh, scores, but... Uh, I want to say 66-60. Yeah. Yeah. I'll look at Last it. year? Oh, we do some other stuff. Woo! All right, our Elite Voices of the Day presented by PAX, Healthcare Elevated. Alan Smith answers the same question. One thing will make the difference. Someone has to step up as the vocal leader. That's Rudy, we think. It's Rudy Williams. Yes. Yeah. BYU has a bunch of great players. They just need a great leader. It's Rudy Williams. Yeah. Ru Rudy is the leader. Yes. Okay, last two games, points. 70, 63 would have won. Okay. And 61 would have won. BYU put up 72 and 66. So mid-60s wins you the game. How Spot about on. that? Yeah. In fact, uh, 63 would have won both games. Just get to 65. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, 65. that's what I'm saying about my career as well. <laughs> 65% on a scale of BYU grades, like that's a, that's a passing grade, right? It's, it's winnable. Yeah, I just, yeah. Yeah. Today's rise and shout. No thoughts, no thoughts. Presented by Mountain America, the official credit union of BYU Athletics. Veterans Day. Yes. Just shout out to all the veterans. Thank you so much for everything you do. Obviously, we, uh, we really appreciate it. Yeah, we love and appreciate you all. Our thanks to today's guests, Spencer Johnson from San Diego and Jamie Shepard, BYU Women's Soccer here in Provo. Sorry to Dennis Pinto. We ran out of time. Big games tonight. Let's oh. go. For Jeremiah Spencer, shout out to Paige Barker Hunt. Yes, BYU Women's Soccer tonight on BYU Radio. And then volleyball and women's basketball tomorrow. And men's hoops tonight, baby! Go Kooks! Get it done!